my name is Helen. I'm one of the joint head of delegations for the UK, along with Guy Freeman, who I can't spot right now, but he's somewhere in there amongst you. Ah, there he is. Um, basically, we just want to say a massive, massive thank you to the ambassador, to Simon, who is there, and to all your team for putting on such a fantastic party. We have had events at the embassies before in the other countries, but never anything to this scale. So I just want to say a massive thank you. We appreciate so much um, your support. Uh, we are hopeful and, and, and positive about Saturday and having all of you guys here uh, lending your support to us. We really, really appreciate it. So without going on, I am going to hand over to the lady who is literally flying the flag for the UK, <laughs> the British ambassador to Ukraine, Judith Goff. Helen, thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much for coming this evening. Uh, we thought those of you coming from the UK would like to feel at home, so we laid on some pretty cold weather for you. Uh, last week it was 24 degrees, not so much tonight. However, we have put on the facilities for you to warm yourselves up. That is great music to dance to, a few heaters and some good drinks down the back there. I'm perfectly convinced you'll all warm up very, very quickly. Um, thank you very much for coming uh, this evening. I'm delighted that we're hosting this party. As a genuine Eurovision fan, I can't think of anything more exciting. Um, I'm particularly excited that this year's uh, theme for Eurovision is Celebrate Diversity. And actually, uh, I have the privilege of living and working in a country uh, which is extremely uh, diverse. It's a country in transition. Uh, and I think that is symbolised quite neatly by the arch that you will all find down on Europe Square, uh, the incomplete rainbow, and I think that symbolises very clearly where this country is at, where it's come from, and where it's going to. And it's an absolute privilege for us here in this embassy uh, to be part of that journey uh, with Ukraine. Um, I'd also like to thank the UK Eurovision Club uh, for all your support and advice. I think that's been really important for us. Uh, the BBC, thank you. I think you've borne with us and, and worked with us very, very well. Uh, and, of course, I'd also like to thank uh, not only Lucy Jones, uh, but also Emily de Forest, who will be singing for us this evening. It's not the most ideal conditions to be singing in with the temperature, but I'm very grateful uh, that they are doing so. Now, as the British ambassador, you'd expect me to be biased, but I genuinely think that we have the best Eurovision entry in Lucy. I genuinely think... She is by far the best ever. Sorry to all of those ambassadors from other countries, I know, but I genuinely believe. I also think that we genuinely have the best Eurovision fans. The British by far make up the largest contingent. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you all and have you here tonight. Uh, thank you so much for doing us proud and being ambassadors for the UK. I'm, I'm sort of the, the official one, but actually uh, all of you are the unofficial ones. But I do think you are really the best Eurovision fans, so thank you for making our job so much easier. Whoa.
We're with the ambassador to the Ukraine. Uh, we're doing a joint interview between Belfast 89 FM and the UK Fan Club. So Hass and I are uh, talking to the ambassador. A very important role to play. Has Ukraine been something special to you? Um, I think yes. Um, I think for me personally, I, I like to do postings where I have a connection with the country. I have been a specialist in Eastern Europe and Central Europe now for going on 20 years uh, and as a Russian speaker and somebody who studied this part of the world uh, there is no more fascinating country other than Georgia where I've already served um, than Ukraine and I think the challenges here at the moment are immense but what we see is a country in transition and the UK is very pleased to play a role in supporting that transition. Yeah, I mean, how important do you think um, this contest is for Ukraine, especially its motto, uh, celebrating diversity? Is this a country that actually celebrates diversity or is it going the opposite direction? From what we hear about media, it could be either way. I think firstly it's a great opportunity for Ukraine because if you look at our media most of the headlines around Ukraine centre on corruption, crisis uh, and conflict uh, and we know that there are issues here but actually what we see living and working here every day is a country that is moving forwards, a younger generation that wants to change this country, bring it closer towards Europe, embrace European values and really reform and become a destination for tourists and overseas investment. Now. As you say, it's a country in transition. It is a diverse country. Many ethnic minorities live here, many different types of people, obviously. And I think we see a transition. The uh, arch of diversity, which has been covered in rainbow colours this week, but not quite complete, I think stands as a symbol for a country that is on a journey. It's not fully there yet in terms of fully embracing all forms of diversity but it's come an awful long way from where it was and I think we're very proud to play a part in working with the Ukrainians uh, as they move forward and I think the fact that you have that rainbow the fact that we see people opening up in Ukraine gives us great cause for optimism this is a country that is changing yes I mean I'm challenging I was going to say challenge is a big thing yeah no, because I was here in 2005 when the Ukraine last hosted the, the mm -hmm. contest and uh, things have changed a lot since the 12 years in here but I think for probably for the better even though they've had lots of you know difficulties I think you you're right in that uh, we should have lots of optimism for the country no. now you s apparently say you're actually a fan of the contest mm -hmm. I mean now you've been following it for many years many years yeah <laughs> you, you have any favorites <laughs> Um, well, oh, many, many yeah. favourites. I think the thing for me is wherever my friends and I yeah. have been, 
across the world, we have always held a Eurovision party. We've held them in the Far East, we've held them in the UK, we've held them in Georgia. It's been a fantastic privilege and joy to actually have Eurovision in the country I'm actually serving in. Uh, Um, And so we're really enjoying that this year. Yeah, I love it. Lucy Jones does a great job, and I know you think so also, Mm -hmm. you know. No, I think her performance yeah. tonight, and she played at the embassy, yes, was, yeah. was really extraordinary. She's clearly extraordinarily talented, and I think you know, hopefully she'll do very well on Saturday. Yeah. You wrote a, uh, a blog mm. about the contest coming here with great enthusiasm. Do you think that Eurovision coming here is, is a good thing? It maybe encourages the country to develop a little more because they see such a variety of people coming here? Um, I think the Ukrainians will take it in their stride. They've hosted uh, Euro 2012, the football. They've also hosted Eurovision uh, previously as well, when you said you came, uh, back in the day. So I think, you know, yes, they enjoy hosting this. Um, It's clearly uh, something that is important to them and also to all the fans travelling. And, of course, the more that people travel to each other's countries, the more we break down barriers. Okay, Okay. Uh, Judikov, Ambassador to Ukraine, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. <laughs> Tell me your secrets, I'll keep them safe. No sign of weakness, it's a sign of.